A thread by Carlos Osuita for Rourke One Jacob. How to prove that you are an irredeemable jackass in just five sentences. I'm sure that President Trump would fire Jacob in less than a week. Rourke One Jacob tweets, Trump probably wins 280 to 300 electoral votes. It's not going to be a landslide. And Hugh, using military analogies, does not make the case that Trump will win big. Stick to actual data and logic. Don't be a grifter like your disciple, Brian Cates. Carlos responds. First, he addresses me with belligerent condescension. Then he totally misstates what I wrote, calling it an analogy to make the case that Trump will win. It's no such thing. Jacob is an idiot. Finally, he ends with three insults. He needlessly insults me twice and another person once. Let's demonstrate just how stupid Jacob is. Jacob is no analyst. He pulled the number of electoral votes out of his butt. Trump won 306 electoral votes in 2016, so anybody who thinks he's going to get fewer electoral votes than that now is simply not using his brain. The Biden campaign says that the polls are wrong. From Daily Mail, Joe Biden's campaign manager says polls favoring him are, quote, inflated. I just saw this. Interesting. Beard Blather 33, Humpter Bidet, Corruption, and General Ass Hattery, starring Thomas Wichter and Saul Montez Bradley. I never miss an episode. Condescension from an imbecile is always funny. Next, Jacob says that I'm using the death of L31 as a military analogy to make the case that Trump will win big. Well, I did no such thing as you already know. I used the death of L31 as an allegorical illustration of how we'll all feel when the Democrat Zeppelin goes down in flames on election night. Zeppelins were hated because they mercilessly bombed civilians. The term baby killer was coined to describe Zeppelins. The Germans believed that there were no non-combatants in the war. Al-Qaeda and Timothy McVeigh shared this view. Plenty of German soldiers refused to follow orders to kill prisoners or civilians, and regular infantrymen hated gas troops. The Zeppelin commanders were strutting narcissists until the British developed aircraft and ammunition that could effectively shoot down airships. Night interception was incredibly dangerous for the British fighters. German Zeppelins had several machine guns. British pilots had no parachutes. Their aircraft were covered with varnish that burst into flame due to static electricity. Night interception was a brand new science. No radar, and the Germans could easily see and hear the British coming. You know what's eerie? The most successful British night interceptors were all shockingly handsome members of high society. Of these four, only Frederick Sowry, the last man, survived the war. After the British got really good at shooting down Zeppelins, the commanders started feeling sorry for themselves. Heinrich Mathy said, it is only a question of time before we join the rest. Everyone admits that they feel it. Our nerves are ruined by mistreatment. If anyone should say he was not haunted by visions of burning airships, then he should be a braggart. Well, they deliberately targeted defenseless civilians. The British fought back and finally ended the German bombing threat in both world wars. Back to Jacob the Jackass. After he totally misunderstands my thread because he's too dumb to grasp it, he tells me to stick to actual data and logic. Then he totally ignores the entire point of the Zeppelin allegory, which derives from the data and logic with which I started the thread. Can you repeat that, please, Jacob? Link in the thread to Eddie the Donkey Braying. Ah, got it. Then he calls me a grifter, a word he misuses. A grifter is a person who engages in petty or small-scale swindling. Can somebody explain how I'm swindling people by not charging them a penny? 
It's hip to use the term, but nobody who uses it actually knows what it means. And then Jacob ends on insulting a person who has nothing whatsoever to do with my thread. So, in just five sentences, Jacob takes five pratfalls. Great job, Jacob. Absolutely stellar. But take solace in the words of Mr. Double Talk. You're never absolutely worthless. You can always serve as a bad example. I will be the greatest president that God ever created.